Welcome back, my calculus adventurers. Today we're going to do average value of a function versus average rate of change. And these topics are usually taught in completely different chapters or different units of your calculus class. And they're calculated in very different ways and they're very different quantities. But if you ever come across questions on a cumulative exam, and you might get confused because the wording is so similar. And so it's good to practice these two topics and see them side by side. So the average value of f on a to b is the average height of f. This has a special formula, 1 over b minus a, definite integral, so the times the definite integral from a to b of f of x dx. So whatever function you're trying to find the average value of, um, and then the interval you're finding the average value over. And so you just have to calculate the definite integral, which will be a number, and multiply that by this number, which is 1 over b minus a. And that final number will be the average height of this function. So this is x squared plus 1. It's a shifted up parabola. We're going from 0 to 3. So this final answer here, this number times this number, is going to be this average height. It's probably a little lower than that, but um, there are all these heights for this function from 0 to 3, and we're going to find the average value. So customizing this formula for this specific function and this specific interval, we'll have 1 minus b, here's our b, here's our a, 3 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to 3 of x squared plus 1 dx. And we calculate that by taking this antiderivative and simplifying this fraction. This is just 1 third times. This antiderivative will use the power rule. Add 1 to the exponent and divide by adding 1 to the exponent plus just a number when you take the antiderivative is the number times the variable that shows up, so 1x, and we'll evaluate that from 0 to 3. So you just calculate that out, 1 third times this whole thing that we have to evaluate. So we plug in 3 into this antiderivative. We have 3 cubed over 3 plus 3, and then minus when we plug in 0. 0 cubed over 3 plus 0. Let's see, here we have a 27 over 3. We have a 1 third times. 27 over 3 is 9. And then here we have a 0 plus a 0. Okay, so it looks like we get 1 third times 12. So it looks like we get 4 as our final answer. That's the average height of this parabola going from 0 to 3. Now that's a very different question than asking for average rate of change, which is usually asked for, asked about pretty early on in a calculus class. Average rate of change, that's the same as the slope of the secant line, that's going to be your good old-fashioned slope formula. So it'll be f of b minus f of a over b minus a, which is just your slope of secant line. And the secant line connects two points on your graph. So what that looks like in this particular problem, here we have the shifted up parabola from 0 to 3. This is our x squared plus 1. We're finding the slope of the secant line from this point to this point. At x equals 0, we're going to the height of the curve. And at x equals 3, we're going to the height of the curve. An average rate of the change is going to be the slope of this secant line here. So average rate of change equals the slope of this line. So we can calculate it out in this particular case, f of b. That will be this function with your second value plugged in. So we'll have 3 squared plus 1, that's our f of b, minus our f of a is with 0 plugged into our function, 0 squared plus 1, 
over b minus a, 3 minus 0. Calculate that out carefully. Make sure to distribute that negative sign to both terms. That's a common issue. We'll have 9 plus 1 minus 1 over 3. And that simplifies out to 9 over 3, which is 3. That'll be the slope of that secant line connecting the endpoints of that curve. So average value versus average rate of change. Calculating average value involves the definite integral. Calculating the average rate of change just uses a good old fashioned slope formula. It's usually taught pretty early in calculus, but when you have a final exam and you see these two problems, especially under stress, you might get jumbled up which one's which. So it's good to review these guys. Let me know if you have any questions. I love working out the problems that you send me. So just comment down below what you want me to make a video on. Bye.